Worldwide Tennis by Worldwide Games. Plays one to two players, takes about, oh, I don't know, 15 minutes or more to play, depending on the game variation, as well as it's for ages, uh, I don't know, 14 and up. And in the game Worldwide Tennis, you're basically going to be playing tennis. You're going to be setting up on one side of the court, and your opponent will set up on the other, and you are going to attempt to outserve and out rally your opponent. And rallying is basically that back and forth of swacking those tennis balls attempting to make sure that your opponent can't hit them. You'll be utilizing serving cards in front of you as well as a hand of cards to help you rally, dodging, moving to certain areas, spending star power as well as utilizing unique and special characters when you're playing the advanced mode of the game. Going back and forth, moving to position, discarding cards to get into the best position possible if need be, and trying to just basically provoke your opponent into utilizing too many cards and whiffing on rolls. The game does have a in which you're going to be rolling as you attempt to smash that ball. And because of that, there are going to be different boards of play. You can have the green one here as well as like the uh, asphalt one. There's a blue one. And there's different types uh, based on the cards you're going to be utilizing in the game. And if you're able to score enough points in the final tied mode for the game, it's like a quick variant when you're tied, you just go up to seven points. And then of course there's the full length version of the game, which I'll talk about a little bit down below, and attempting to basically get enough points to score and win sets. And if you can win three sets in this game of Worldwide Tennis, you'll win the game. You can probably even make this game, like if you have multiple copies, you can play like a tournament of sorts. It plays like a lot of the other sports style games with some unique little variations and features, which I will take down below and show you how it's played and what you need to do in order to play the different variations of Worldwide Tennis, and then we'll talk about my review. The setup for Worldwide Tennis is fairly simple, and what's unique about it is whether you're playing the basic scenario of the game or if you want to go into the more advanced rules of the game, and it gives you an idea of how you can do that, along with there is a solo player variant at the back of the book, which kind of explains, it does a fairly good job of explaining how the game works. But basically, how it's going to function is pretty simply. I'll just talk about the two-player version of the game. There's the rule book here. You've got the different fields that you can play on, and they both have a front and a back. You're going to get your serve cards as well as your starting hand cards, and there's going to be five serve cards that literally just say serve on them, and they go from uh, basically 2, 4, 7, 10, and 13 in difficulty of player aid, and these are your starting cards. They have a bottom right symbol, which will indicate this is your starting hand, and there's six of them, and everybody's going to get the same starting cards to begin with, which I'll go into a little more detail in a second here. There's also going to be the rest of the deck of cards, which you'll take and you will shuffle accordingly to make sure that it's nice and randomized, but I've already went ahead and did that. There's also stars in the game, and every player is going to get four of them to start with, so select four of the stars, place them face up, and the fifth one will be face down. There's some extra ones, and you don't need those. There is the iconography, which explains how it all works and what it does and how it affects the gameplay, and most of this is going to be used in the more advanced rules, but it's good to have out regardless because there are certain rules and iconography that you will be using in the basic gameplay, which is mainly what I'm going to be talking about until we come to my review. This is the scoreboard in which you're going to be setting your sets, your games won, and the point system, and it plays just like normal tennis as far as the advanced game goes. You'll be scoring... Uh, when you score, you'll go up to 40, and if you score again, that's going to be a game. However, if you get the same one, one player will go down if one player wins. So you're always going to have to be at least one point ahead of your opponent in order to succeed to win a game. And then it's the best up to six, as long as somebody else is trailing by two. That will be a set, and you're playing up to three sets. Basically, the rules of tennis. So if that didn't make sense to you, just look at the rules and how tennis functions, and that's going to be how this game functions as well. There are four different characters that you can play as, and of course I have eight here because I have a different one, I have different language cards, but regardless, there are four you can choose from, and if you do choose them, they're going to give you unique abilities. I'll tell you what cards you remove from the deck, as well as what you can uh, add onto the basic cards in your deck. And that's pretty much it. There's going to be some tokens you'll have in the game. So you're going to have the red player and you're going to have the blue player. And then there's this little tennis ball token you'll be utilizing as well as two die. One is going to be used for difficulty of your shots. And the other one here is going to be used for odds and evens when it comes to certain strokes you'll be able to make and it attempts to defeat your opponent. Select one of the boards, remove the other one, and then go ahead and place it right in the middle between both players. So it should look something like this for the first setup of the game. 
and then have a player start. And you can go ahead and flip a coin like they normally do, or flip one of these guys here and call heads or tails, and that will determine the starting player. And based on whether the game's um, going to be odd or even, is going to determine which way a person is going to place themselves, whether it be on the backhand or the forehand deck. You have the full back deck here, and then you have the for front foreground up here, and these are the different areas of the board. And basically, it's fairly simple to start the game off. There's three different things you're going to do. You're going to move, you're going to stroke, and you're going to have the optional movement. But when you're starting off, you'll also get the opportunity to serve. And to serve, you'll simply choose one of these cards here. And if you're playing a blue card like this one here, you'll go ahead and place that one just like that. Then you're going to roll this die here, determine if it succeeds. And so we'll go ahead and start the game off like that. Check to see if your roll is higher than the difficulty. And if it is, it succeeds. Eight beats two, which means that because you are here, which is where you need to be, and you're starting off with the ball here, it will move to here. Then after that, the, the first player is going to be the person who's defending, and they're going to get a chance to move. And when you begin the game, you get to choose to move in three different ways. You can move left or right, one space for free, so I can simply move from here to here for free. I could move horizontally, either front or backwards, and that is going to cost one card from my hand, and this is my hand, so I'd have to discard a card in order to do that. And then the other one is I can move uh, two, uh, so I can move to this way or this way. So I can move actually two spaces if I wanted to, and that would also make me discard a card. So discarding a card to move two spaces, discarding a card to move front or back, or simply just moving, uh, moving one space horizontally is going to let me do that for free. So in this case, I'm obviously going to move from here to here, and that's going to let me move horizontally, nothing to discard, and now I'm in the position to where I can smack the ball back. And you can imagine how tennis functions, and it's going to look the same. You can look at your cards based on your position of the board and select a card. Maybe I'll select a baseline defense card. And as you can see on the baseline defense card, it's going to have where you need to be, where the ball is going to go, any benefits you might get for playing the card, the difficulty cards that we be drawn at the end of the match, and then a difficulty for your opponents to try and match if and when they do choose to strike back. So I went ahead and played this baseline defense card. It means that I have to be in any of these areas here, along with the ball, and then I can push the ball over there. After that, this is going to stay in front of me for the rest of the round, in which case my, I now have the third option, and that is to optionally move. I can either stay here for free, or I can move to the neutral area, which is here. So if I'm in any of these other areas here, I can spend one star to move back to the neutral area. And the final one is I can move up to the net for free. Those are the three different things I can do. And if I'm happy, which I am, I would just stay right there. In which case, the ball is now in my opponent's court. My opponent will now have the opportunity to go ahead and play a card that they would like to play. And they are going to choose something like, oh, I don't know, they could choose to... They could choose to do a baseline defense as well, and they could play this card. Now, whenever you play a blue to a blue, it's an instant success. A blue to an orange is an instant success as well, but in any other combination, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the card's difficulties and you're going to roll based on them. So for instance, if I played this drop shot here, I would check to see uh, how much the difficulty is, as well as check to see the difficulty on my opponent's side, and it's gonna be based on the color of the court. So blue here is zero, and then I've got this difficulty of five, so I'd have to roll a five or higher in order for this to succeed. And I am in the position where I need to be, and it shows you here as well. And I would roll to see if it succeeds. A 19, that is a success, as well as I would check to see where it's going to go. And it's going to go in uh, the front area here. And so then the player is going to go back and forth. Basically, uh, eventually here, somebody is either not going to be able to play a card, is going to fail a roll, or won't be able to arrive to the location that needs to be gotten to. And in which case, the round will end and that player will score. In the basic game, you're scoring to seven, but when you're playing the main game, the advanced game, you'll score that right there. You'll discard any cards that you've played to your discard pile, and the ones that you've played will also have a number on them, allowing you to draw a new card from the deck. Both players will go ahead and do that, and in this case, he would discard this one and draw a new card from his deck. And then you're also always going to get this card back, which is your winner card, regardless of whether you played it or not. It will go back to your hand, and all your serves will come up again so that you can go ahead and utilize them again. There's some other unique tennis aspects to the game, like when you're serving, if you fail the first serve, you'll get an opportunity to go ahead and serve again. And if you fail both of them, that's a fault, and then a second fault, and that means you're going to lose a point, 
which means that the opponent, your opponent's going to take it. Additionally, as you're winning games and whatnot, you're going to be switching sides between each of these different fields here, and the, and the person who's serving will go to the neutral position. And uh, sometimes you're going to also be doing changes of sides. Changing sides is going to let you be, be able to spend stars to pick up a card from the discard pile, as well as draw a card or gain two stars. So as the game progresses, you're going to be gaining these back or drawing cards from your discard pile that might be useful to you throughout the game. And in the advanced rules, there's a lot of unique things like the top spin rule and the slice rule that will allow you to do certain things, as well as make it more challenging for your opponent to be able to stop your attacks, which is also included on these cards here. But that's the basic gist of the game, going back and forth. I didn't explain it fully, but I think you get the gist of the game. Playing cards, attempting to roll and manage your your, your the cost of your difficulty along with your opponents, and rolling higher than that, as well as, of course, unique and special abilities like the last one here I'll explain, which is Ace, when you go ahead and throw an ace. So for instance, if I were to choose this serve to start with and I were to roll a 19 or a 20, that would ace my opponent and instantly score me once right there on the board. Fairly nice. Basically, it's like smacking the tennis ball and they instantly miss it, which happens in tennis quite a bit, actually. And that's the idea of worldwide tennis. So we'll come up and I'll discuss some more of the finer details, some of the gameplay mechanics and what I think about the game and whether you should pick it up or not. But I think you have a good idea of how the game is played and what everything comes with in the game, how unique this experience is when playing tennis on a tabletop, which I've never done before. Tennis is a fairly interesting sport and I actually haven't played tennis in probably over a decade, but I've always enjoyed sports and this one is one I've also enjoyed. I specifically like watching it. And I actually remember my wife's grandma watching the sport constantly played. I remember Misty May Trainer and her partner going to the Olympics, Olympics and dominating, which is always fun to watch. When you get these professional athletes doing pretty much anything that seems like a superhero, it feels good. And I like the idea of simulating what it might be like to play like one of them, especially when you're 200 pounds and six foot three dude, probably not going to be seeing a whole lot of tennis, specifically if you're not in the best of shape like myself. But regardless, I can sit down at the tabletop and play with my friends some worldwide tennis and get a good good feel of the types of strategy when it feels like. Like for instance, rolling a die in this game, in general I don't like luck based games all that much, but there is a lot of mitigation in this game and when you roll die it's your ability to hit that ball and sometimes you're gonna get lucky, sometimes you won't get lucky and you won't get that extra attack, so that extra ace which is really difficult to get. In general you're going to be able to smack the ball and you're going to succeed and when you play the advanced mode you'll be able to use star power and star power represents a gauge of stamina. Stamina is something that's important in this game and it's represented in two ways. You're going to have your hand of cards and you're going to have the stars that you're utilizing in order to make sure that you can get to where you need to be, hit the ball where you want it to go, and make sure that you're able to hit it in the right way by discarding or rolling the die and discarding these stars to make sure you can succeed. Each of the different areas will allow you to do certain things that in tennis are regarded as very important moves, whether it be something like the uh, slicing or whether you're doing something like a top spin. Slicing is actually going to make it more challenging for your opponent to hit the ball, making them have to roll something higher. And the top spin is going to be players in order to get to that front area of the net, they're going to have to discard a card where they normally wouldn't have to. And so it kind of puts a little more pressure because your hand is a gauge and you're not going to be drawing as many cards when you're not spending as many cards, which happens a lot when you're winning the game. So there is a little bit of a catch up feature for those who are playing cards, playing cards and not succeeding. And those people who only need to play one card to succeed, that other player will get to draw cards and you're not going to run through your deck. So you're always going to have a ton of extra cards to play through. But when you play the main game, you most likely will. And if that happens, you'll just reshuffle. There is a lot of added extra professionalism to the game, allowing you to use unique characters like Bogdan, Raphael, and Roger, these guys here. They'll have certain cards removed from their base deck. They're going to give you a winner action on certain cards, as well as maybe it's easier for them to volley and it's harder for them to serve. Or maybe baseline defense is going to be more difficult, but any forehand card will let you, forehand card will let you actually have a winner on it and so on and so forth, which changes your deck and it changes your strategy and how you want to play your cards. I remind myself of a lot of these style, like these feel like a classical style sports game. I played one that was similar in football called like Brawl Ball or something like that. And I've played one that involved basketball and this one has the same style and appeal. So if you've seen those videos of my review, you'd know what I feel about those. And this one hits close to home as far as what I think about those. It's a pretty solid game. I think it's straight down the middle as far as games go, but with a unique and added feature, feeling like you're playing a sport while playing 
playing the game. There's a lot of luck involved in the game because you are rolling die, but at the same time you have that mitigation on how you want to utilize your cards. Sometimes though, it won't be enough. If you roll a 1 constantly, you are not going to win the game, there's no way around it. And if you roll a 20 every time, you're very, very likely to win, especially when you're serving and you're rolling those higher difficulty cards because then you're going to ace. And that just comes with the style of this game that this is. This has the features of a modern board game and a classic board game. It reminds me of one of my old, old style football games I used to play where you'd move the characters across the field and whatnot. And it also reminds me of the unique and new modern mechanics, such as adding the unique special abilities on the cards, the unique characters, the fact that you can play on different boards and that changes how the decks function and what cards you can use and how they're going to be balanced based on what you're playing on. And then you can play the longer variation of the game or the shorter one, and even potentially combine a tournament style out of it. And for those of you who only want to play as a single player, you still get to experience the game of tennis all on your own. It pretty much functions just the same way. I mainly play this two players though. That's the way I like to play games. And this is the way I like to play this one specifically. And if you're interested in taking a look at the game Worldwide Tennis by Worldwide Games, I suggest you do so. For those of you who like tennis, like sports games, like classical games, you're going to enjoy this game. If you don't like luck involved games, this one has that in it. If you don't like sports games, this is not going to be for you. There's not a huge amount of artwork. There's just basic characters with their stats and the stars that give you a depiction of how the characters function, which is just like my other soccer game I was reviewing like probably two months ago. And it also has the different board variations. So it's going to just give you what you need to enjoy playing a game of tennis on a tabletop while maybe watching your favorite players go at it head to head in the Olympics or if playing playing on the TV, watching your your favorite vol, uh, uh, your favorite tennis episodes or wherever you'd find tennis. I, I, I don't know where you'd find tennis. But regardless, definitely check out the game down below if this is something that interests you. Let me know in the comments section below if this is something that would interest you, what you like, what you don't like about the game, and what's going to get you to go above and beyond to pick up the game currently on Kickstarter. Down below, link in the description. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game slash card game review. If you're interested in this game, like I said, link down below in the description. And also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We're giving away the game Dragon Lords Battle of Darien the Deluxe set which also has the game on kickstarter as well go ahead and support your local indie gaming publisher slash designers and check out the site as well as our patreon every dollar helps us be able to ship out giveaways as well as make more content it comes a lot from you guys and we do greatly appreciate it while checking out our live streams every wednesday at 6 30 p.m pst on facebook where we play games just like this one down below and you can see these games played in person and determine whether you think they're going to be an exciting game for you and your family. This one's so funny. The first game I played, I rolled ones constantly, but it didn't even bother me. Like usually games like, like with luck based irritates me when I roll so low, but this one was just like, well, I guess I just missed the ball and it's probably something I gotta do in person. So I guess I can't get too mad, but regardless, whenever I did roll high and I actually spiked that ball where I, how I wanted to spike, that's a volleyball term. Maybe it's a tennis term as well. I don't know. Regardless though, it felt good to do so. So I don't know, check the game out if it's something you'd like. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And as always, I look forward to probably never seeing you on a tennis court. Never, never seeing you on a tennis court. Unless it's on tabletop. Next time.